I'm delighted to be joined by Tamar Ghosh, the Chief Executive of the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. Great to see you again, Tamar. Thank you for coming into the studio. So the title of our film, Access to Health and Global Challenges, it's a theme that runs through all of our reports. Why is access to healthcare so difficult to achieve? So for communities that are living in remote locations, in poverty, in bad situations, it's so hard to achieve because it's so multifaceted. So if we think about the financial aspects of it, many of these communities are not provided with free, good quality health care from government. They have to make their own financial decisions and often that's a choice between food or health and they won't choose health until it maybe becomes crisis point. Also in the countries where they're based, in their communities, they need to have access to the right available drugs and diagnostics to treat them. Sometimes they're just not available and it has to be accessible to them if they're living far away, if they're making a choice about whether they travel a long distance and don't earn money that day, again, it's a hard choice for them to make. Um, also, if we think about capacity, in many countries where we see high poverty, the ratio between doctors and patients is really low. One in 50,000 in Malawi, for example. In those sorts of situations, they have to have access to the right people that understand their problem, whether that's doctors, nurses, community health workers, and sometimes that just isn't available. And no doubt climate change, the biggest challenge facing our planet, is going to bring diseases to different communities that you can't really foresee. There are two big issues around climate change and health. The first is we don't really know the consequences. What we don't know is what will happen to existing diseases if we're living in a different way and what will happen in terms of emerging diseases. Will we see whole new uh, types of challenge that we've never faced before? The second big issue though is that those people that are living in poverty situations in remote areas are the least prepared. They'll have the least resilience. They're often more reliant on the land. They're often living in areas which are more vulnerable to those weather changes and conditions and they'll be least able to deal with those situations so in terms of access to health care it's going to impact all of us but it's going to impact those that are least able to cope far worse. There are so many challenges aren't there to address what about conflict people who are fleeing war zones no doubt that has a huge impact on their health. There are so many um, difficult and sad impacts at the moment between conflict and health. If we look, for example, in Yemen, under civil war, it's now been almost three years, almost one million people affected by the worst epidemic of cholera. The issue with conflict is there are so many different areas again to consider. In the short term, in conflict situations, often health um, infrastructure is targeted. Clinics, hospitals, health workers are targeted, which means that health care is interrupted, just normal health care. Um, it also means that if we're looking at displacement situations, that populations are traveling to areas and putting additional strain on those new areas for their health services. In the long term, I think there are also issues. Those health infrastructures that have been damaged in conflict situations will take decades to recover. And we see that in parts of Nigeria. I'm sure we'll see that in Yemen. That's very difficult. It means that everything is being held back, all of that progress. But thinking about communities living in that sort of situation for a long time, the mental health issues, the anxiety, just their ability to, uh, to cope with ordinary health conditions are going to be affected. So there's a, both a short term and a long term issue. The challenge for us is how do we, as a society working in health, deal with that? It means different conversations. It means negotiating and thinking about having peace breaks so that people can go in and provide medical assistance. It means um, thinking about political situations and policy change. So it brings really complex challenges to the world of global health. All that aside, there's been huge progress, hasn't there, in diseases like malaria and encephalitis, a number of other sleeping sickness, for instance. But there are emerging diseases and that presents new challenges. What hope do you have? So there are new emerging diseases. We've seen Zika and SARS recently, and we've seen emerging strains and re-emergence of existing diseases like Ebola. But for the society working in global health, it's about how we keep on top of that. So our networks around the world are about understanding where new research is needed, understanding where new funding is needed, where innovation is needed, having the difficult conversations, trying to push on policy change. Our job is to raise awareness of all of those things and to try and make sure that we increase funding, increase research and increase focus so that we have a chance of tackling all of these big issues in global health. 
Tamar, it's been a great pleasure to talk to you. We look forward to following your progress. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.